So in awe of this amazing team that's sitting up here at this table and the hard work that they put in as organizing the month and be thinking forward and backwards and sideways and diagonal about um, how, how to move this work forward. And they're, they're amazing. Um, I missed their last planning meeting. So I'm going to be some uh, backbone support, true backbone support today. So um, they're just going to have to let me know what support they need. But today, we're going to refresh our collective knowledge about what we did in October, November. November is a lot of time we now. Uh, remembering back that part is going to be the last we'll reflect things on that. We'll share resources like we have in the past. And then um, we want to really think about some intentional planning about engaging parents and where we engage parents, what that looks like. Um, and spend some considerable amount of time in our agenda today on that piece. Is there anything else you want me to share? I think I'm having a better next. I need a motion to approve last last month's meeting minutes. Thank you. All second. <laughs> Look, nobody's talking today, so <laughs> it's just going to be awesome here. <laughs> Thank you. So in front of you, you may have, you see these laminated pages? <clears throat> Some of you one for everyone. This is just to remind you that we are using a lot of um, frameworks as we do this work, and we've tried to capture documents that we think will be helpful as reference tools when going through the sessions. And if you have somebody that you'd like to invite to this meeting that maybe hasn't been before, every um, the third Wednesday of the month is a small, brief orientation to catch that individual up on the work that's been done so they can come and be comfortable uh, completing and being here and have a meeting. So please do think of the ones that need to be at the table and know that it will help get them up to speed so that they can uh, feel comfortable contributing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go next to Emily. Oh my gosh. My mouth is full. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> talk about quick wins. Mm, quick wins. Um, let me think about these. So we've, I'm talking with my mouth full because that's just what day it is. Um, so quick wins, we talked about how to um, incorporate different knowledge that we have around the table into um, the community, uh, maybe flyers or um, different types of groups. We as a leadership team have decided that it's really important to have the voice of um, our customers, whoever that looks like at the table as well. Um, so you'll hear a little bit about this later in the meeting, but um, we plan to facilitate um, a meeting that will include parents in the community um, so we can kind of hear what their needs are, what direction they would like the community to go. Um, we're going to host, we talked about maybe a dinner or something, a community cafe, um, where we just kind of chat with them, see what the needs are, what they're facing in the community, gaps in services. Um, and try to move the work forward that way. Um, we've also talked about uh, <clears throat> ways to track the data in the community and what we're doing, um, and that Unite Us might be able to partner um, in that. Yeah. Is there anything else? I'm sure I'm missing things. I, you're doing great. Okay, well, that was all I had. You said you're doing great, like there was more I needed to say. I was just feeling that was through. Your your facilitator agenda. <laughs> did we miss anything, everybody? No, I think that covered I oh, think most of it. I don't know. We did just want to mention, and maybe you did this, but I don't think I heard that. Uh, just uh, congratulations to Prairie Public Schools. Oh, yes, your student assistance program. Great publicity. Um, and thank you for including community partners in this work in that publicity. And um, thank you for that work and the whole group for endorsing that piece. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like this group, the community effort. That, that was most of our November agenda. It was a really good conversation about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> next is uh, some resource sharing. So we did this at the last meeting. Um, so if everybody kind of wants to, are we gonna go around the room and do this again? Yes. Okay. Um, so if everybody wants to go around the room and just talk about your organization, if you have any flyers to hand out, 
Um, if you have any upcoming events that are happening, um, anything you want to share out that you think would be helpful for the team, um, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, the only thing new with Unite Us is um, I personally have absorbed the Omaha area, so I'll be shifting some of my work um, to eastern Nebraska too, but I'm not going to lessen anything happening in central Nebraska. Um, I've done quite a few presentations with like COCs and um, adv advocacy groups, um, education-based groups lately, so there's a lot of schools that are, um, I think, moving forward with using the platform and thoughts about how to connect kids with like mental health stuff. So I talked a little bit about Kearney Public Schools um, on the Metro Omaha um, Education Consortium meeting. Um, so they're pretty interested in finding out more about you know, what you guys are doing. So I might connect you with an Omaha group, but maybe you could come speak to them about what you guys are doing. Um, that's kind of what's going on with United States. <laughs> Next. My job doesn't change. Who I'm working with. So I don't have a lot. I don't think I have anything, but I know I asked our Zoom folks if they have anything to plug it in the chat. So if anything comes up, um, I'll share on their behalf as we move on. Um, our CCP program has a new fancy flyer about our program. Um, we probably will be doing some intake information this spring, early summer, for some new providers, possibly. Um, we also, on Thursday, are pretty excited about transition to kindergarten. Um, collaboration with child care providers and area preschools with Kearney Public Schools. So we've got 40-some providers and child care or preschool teachers coming, and we'll have a panel of Kindergarten teachers and principal and things like that. So pretty exciting. Can I just do you want to introduce yourself before you share? Oh, you just sorry. said <laughs> just oh, yeah. very no, small. Yeah. Uh, I'll start. Emily and I know, sorry. <laughs> I'm not a good facilitator. <laughs> Nicole Hirsch, Health and Human Services. Matt Morch, Community Partners. Aaron Small, Six Times Child Care Partner Coach. Yes. Um, Alexandra Dillon, Early Learning. Connection out of ESC 10, and we have an early childhood conference in Holbridge, March 25th, and the Grand Island Early Childhood Conference is the first Saturday in February. Um, and then we have a Spanish speaking conference for Spanish speaking providers that will be in Grand Island on April 1st. It's a lot of great early childhood education uh, conferences in person. To be sweeter, but for trying to be partners. Um, probably the most recent update is the board of directors, who was a few of them present today, had a retreat a couple weeks ago. And uh, the work that you guys are all doing was very alive and present in our conversations. Um, as you know, there is a steering committee that has oversight um, over the work that you guys are doing. So there's a lot of great conversations about how the structure that steering committee to really support the work that you guys are all doing as well. So there'll be more to come on that. Um, there is some data pieces that I uh, do want to, we being the steering committee, want to start bringing to you. So if we have time today, we can talk a little bit more about what that might look like at your future meeting. Um, my charge with some new funding that we have available, we have around $70,000 over the next two years to expand our community response piece. And I think we've talked about the community response in the past. Uh, that is uh, a program that is available for uh, agencies to apply for flexible funding when there's no other services and support uh, for people in our community who need basic needs. Uh, what we've been funded to do is expand that program to employers to prove that um, employees who are having difficulty getting to work on time or retaining their jobs, um, if we wrap flexible funding around them to support the housing costs, utility cutoffs, child care um, expenses, could we um, retain employees in the workplace? So that will be our task this year. Um, we're just beginning conversations about this. Eddie and Eduardo uh, in our office will be the lead on that. And we, we haven't actually gotten started yet in that piece. Um, we want to start talking with employers and finding who are pilots that are willing pilot groups that are willing to do that. Um, so we're pretty excited about that work. We're, we're confident that we can prove 
that um, most employees have access to quality health care and have their housing paid and have food in their bellies, that um, they, they will be present for work. So, and a sense of belonging, that's that fourth um, fourth piece that we look at at Food Security, your housing, your food, um, you know, health care, mental health, and you have a sense of belonging uh, in your community. So those are things we're working on. I'm Jill Schubauer. I'm with uh, Region 3 Behavioral Health Services. I'm the youth system specialist. And probably our biggest uh, news, which most of you may have already heard, we did add a full time uh, youth like, suicide prevention coordinator uh, across the age groups. I tried to say youth because that was my focus when I did uh, suicide prevention. But the focus is across all age um, spans. And um, so Hunter Lud Ludwig, he's reached out to uh, several individuals already, or will be probably. Uh, he started, I believe, in October, has hit the ground running, um, literally. And uh, so he is fully trained as a CPR trainer, is able to do that, is uh, advocating for schools to implement SOS within their school system. Um, it's going to be doing some outreach to faith-based communities, um, helping individuals just with resources, need safety, uh, whatever that need is around suicide prevention. So if you have any needs there, you can reach out to me or him. Um, as far as the youth system piece goes, uh, I'm continually uh, busy as far as just identifying and hearing from all of you what the needs are within the behavioral system around our uh, youth needs and trying to help bridge those gaps, whether that be with training, resources, um, services, interventions, whatever those needs are. And then another part of my role is also uh, uh, overseeing the professional partner program. And so we do have a, for lack of a better term, case management type of program within Region 3 that offers um, wraparound uh, program to families that have youth with mental health diagnosis. We do have some openings. Um, so if you have families in need of that, please make a referral. Uh, I also, <clears throat> I don't think anyone here from Families Care. I also do coaching for the Parent Connectors program that Families Care uh, implements as well. And so if you're needing any anything as far as the behavioral health youth systems uh, piece, reach out to me and I'll make those matches for you. Ian Kowalik, uh, Lieutenant of Carney Police Department. Uh, a few things that have been new with the department in the last couple of months is we started our co-responder program where we have a licensed mental health therapist that's on staff. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. So it's a good deal. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, we, we spent a majority of our days, weeks, hours um, with mental health called check welfares and, um, you know, if they don't get APC, we try to do some type of, you know, uh, safety plans. And it's nice that we have a therapist now that can go out with us on these calls, meet with them, do the follow-up, hopefully in time, it'll help them get their needs that they need, plus reduce the time that we spend on these type of calls with the same individuals. Um, so... Her name's Megan Morris out of, uh, she came from Austin, Texas. She did it down there. She, she's very good so far. Um, she works with the sheriff's office as well. Um, and then she has a program coordinator that will do follow up to to make sure individuals are following their safety plans. Um, and then if we have needs to go back, we can, but they take a lot of that follow up from us. And it just, you know, we, we do the initial calls typically and then kind of go on to the next call. These individuals can help us do that follow up and keep them on the right path. So that's been a big deal. Um, and then another thing we have going on in the last month, we started our Project Lifesaver program too. It's for uh, it's basically um, a tracking program for caretakers for that um, oversee individuals that have a that wander and have no sense um, sense of danger. So you know, parents of kids with you know, some type of disability where they may, you know, run to a train tracks, run to a body of water or run out in a car or just take off, um, gives them peace of mind where they can have this like tracking software where we can, we can fall find them hopefully. So um, other areas have uh, found success using it. So uh, she brought it in here uh, where us in the sheriff's office are going to use it. So those two programs have launched in the last two months and I think it's a good thing for our community. Um, I'm Trinian Patterson with Head Start and Early Head Start. Um, 
the only really big thing that's happened or Head Start really has started in the last couple of months is that um, the way our program is set up, all of our funding is federal funding. And just, you know what, in November, um, we had the biggest increase passed through Congress and signed by President Biden for Head Start in the last like 10, 15 years, um, which will be huge in helping us to expand, pay employees better. Um, a lot of different things will come trickling down from that. And that was passed by Congress. So that's a really big thing for Head Start. I am Angie Johnson, owner of the Child Development Center in Kearney, Adventure to Success. And I would say our biggest um, news is the same stuff we already shared. We're looking very forward to the transition to kindergarten meeting that's coming out. I'm Janelle Brock. I'm a social worker at the VA um, Suicide Prevention Program. I'm on Kathy Gifford with Pine Public Schools and I'm the chairman of the Buffalo County Community Partner, so I'm here to work with them. Doug Kramer with the Buffalo County Attorney's Office. Um, we do juvenile services, uh, such as currency and diversion. Um, we receive some community based grant funds through the Nebraska Crime Commission, which comes from the Nebraska legislature. Buffalo County gets about $165,000 a year. And we kind of subgrant that out to the health partners, the Boys Town, Compass, um, Owens, um, Educational Services. We do some uh, electronic monitoring, some coaching, tracking. Um, we also work with Sherman County. We um, have been doing their diversion programs for the last two years. Um, so we do some truancy mediation with Central Mediation and also another partner. And then in uh, October, uh, I wrote a supplemental grant through the Crime Commission uh, for Boys Town to have a school support specialist at Horizon Middle School to work with at-risk youth. Um, we're going to actually have one of our first meetings this afternoon. Uh, Wendy Cole is that worker that worked with Amber Lewis there at Horizon. Um, seeing how that goes, um, it's been, I think, very blessed to have uh, service providers such as all of you, in, including Boys Town, mm -hmm. Compass. I mean, I, I'll miss people if I try to list every place, but um, you make my job easier. And I guess you make the county attorney look good that you're doing all these programs. So I'm sure Sean thanks everybody and appreciates everything that you do. So, Debbie Schroeder, I serve on the board of directors of Buffalo County Community Partners, and I'm here to listen. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Veronica Olivine. I'm the Prevention Coordinator at the Safe Center. Um, I don't have any updates or any new resources to share today. Uh, Libby Harsh, County Public Schools, Sixth Sense CCP coach um, with Aaron. So, Aaron shared, I think, everything. So, nothing else to add. I'm Candy Koenig with Monroe Meyer Institute, UNC, and also on the board for our community partners. Matt Lohmeyer with uh, Good Samaritan Hospital, also on the board, and uh, nothing to report at this time. Martha Marcudena with Buffalo County Community Partners. Um, I would share that one of the pieces that we're working on is the work with food access. So just letting our community know that uh, SNAP and Double Up Food Bucks is accepted at the Kearney Area Farmers Market, and it's a more that we can let our families and uh, the seniors know the better that they can stretch their dollars to be able to spend that at the farmer's market in May through October. And so we're trying to continue to help build support, build capacity for the Kearney Area Farmer's Market to strengthen that program and bringing other community members around that too. Chad Allen with the Community Partners. I'm Amber Cochran with the <clears throat> Hot Meals USA and we did the Christmas meal on Christmas Day, and we got like 2,500 meals, and um, we had over 100 volunteers, which was awesome. It was great community support. And right now, we feed training groups pretty much every month, several times around the state. Um, and we're also working on funding for a building, because right now we don't have a building. We just have trailers kind of around the town and work out a lot of that for our kids that we need to. 
And I'm Wanda Fedorchik with the Community Partners. And I guess in addition to meeting some more prepared, we just continue to have flex funds available that outside of what Denise uh, mentioned is for uh, anyone related to basic needs. Um, they start with the agencies in the community like Salvation Army, Jubilee Center, someone um, was working directly in, in that role um, and that they need additional assistance, the agency will make referral to us for that funding. Um, the other side of what I do is substance abuse prevention and there is a UNK event coming up on February 16th. Um, Deputy David Gomez is gonna talk about the normalization and glamorization of drugs and sexual misconduct through social media. So social media is always one of those things. I left some flyers back there, like six or eight, and then I'll just pass one around so you can take a peek at it. Uh, the other resource I brought this time was the parent handbook. So there's a elementary level and then middle and high school level. And I brought some extras of those back there too. So if you want one, grab one. Um, if you need a few, let me know. I can try to get those. There's a couple Spanish too. Um, so. I'll pass one each direction so you guys can think about it. I'm Nadia Asadi. I'm on the Bumpton County Community Partner Board. Um, Diane Duffin isn't here, so I will just, um, she is our leader for AIM, which is Accountability, Impact, and Measurement. Um, and we have results from uh, two sur surveys, the DAP and then also the Youth Risk, Youth Behavior Risk. Um, and so we have been working on uh, uh, reviewing that data and hope to bring that some of this group soon. So. Some promising things that are coming out of the data. Um, and then I'm Ellery Butterfield. I'm the youth coordinator for the community partners. Um, just reiterating that um, I I am still taking applications for YAB. Uh, we are going to be starting like formal process for recruiting for YAB uh, come March, I believe, and we would really love to be able to present in schools. Um, our youth intern is really gifted public speaker. She's kind of running the uh, speech team for UNK right now, and so she's putting together a little presentation to help um, explain what YAB does and get kids interested, because, you know, we're the youth, adolescents, and children's work group, but when was the last time any of us were in high school? Um, it's important that we make sure that the high school students and the middle school students and the, the youth are giving us their opinions too, because that's who's really going to be affected. So, um, oh, and then last thing, I'm also uh, looking for maybe some youth to help out uh, in a panel for the Nebraska School Mental Health Conference that's going to be held here in Kearney in June. Um, I'm still gathering information about that, so I'll pick that up a little more. But um, if you have any youth that you think would be really good about uh, sharing some of their experience or ideas surrounding school mental health, um, I'd be really, really glad to connect with them. My name is Dan Endor. I'm the Director of Human Services and Safety with Kearney Public School. Uh, thank you, Salon. Very good, thank you. Uh, and thank you for your support over the course of the last couple of months. Uh, we had a community counselor meeting a few weeks back. And as we again approached implementation, we started to get a little bit of pushback, criticism of this new program. And again, and that's that's not totally unexpected when you have something new. Um, but the ability to say, hey, Buffalo County Community Partners supports this, and, and so did the people in this room, uh, without naming names. I mean, we just said there was support amongst some some other groups that were looking out for the well-being of kids. Uh, that certainly meant a lot. Denise spoke up and was just outstanding. And quite frankly, it, it turned into a little bit of a pep rally uh, without me really having to say anything at all. So uh, thank you to all of you for your support. And we hope to kick that off within the next few weeks. There are just a few wrinkles to work out with really with the company and their video and it few other pieces of their paperwork um, before we actually implement. Jason Owens, I'm the principal of this building, the Around Center. Um, one thing to note is next Tuesday, we'll start the tutoring program that we had last semester here for Carney Public School students grades three through 12. So if you know of anybody that's struggling academically, um, there's a form they can fill out online on the district website. And from four to five, we have UNK teacher scholars here to work with them. Um, 
this semester we're changing our format a little bit where we're going to have a math group and a reading group to help improve those skills and then another group to help kids get caught up in any work that you get caught up so, thanks everybody all right um i'm tana miller i'm the behavioral health coordinator at community partners um i'm actually going to pass around uh this brochures you can keep one if you want to you don't have to it's actually some expulsion data. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to lift up some challenges that I think Aaron and Libby would all have also seen um, in our community that the expulsion rate in Buffalo County for child care um, is very high. It is higher than any of our other communities that also participate in rooted relationships, which is one of the grant funded strategies that we implement. Um, there are some discrepancies in reporting. Um, so there's some challenges there too on what is an expulsion. And actually that brochure tells you exactly what a brochure is or what an expulsion is and why you should care. Um, you'll see kind of some alarming statistics that um, a child that's expelled from child care or preschool is 10 times more likely to drop out of high school to face incarceration. Um, so, you know, it's really alarming fact. So it kind of comes back to this group. I know we've talked a lot about how that early early childhood um, experiences affects a lot of the other things that we're doing later in life. So I just wanted to kind of bring this to your attention. Um, the good news is we do have some supports in our community. We have a lot of great early childhood supports rooted in relationships, just being one of those pieces, um, providing social emotional tools, but we still struggle. Um, and there's still still challenges. And I think having a child care provider here, you would hear that one of the biggest challenges is workforce, not being able to have um, a steady workforce in early childhood. So I'm just bringing that to your attention because that's some of the work that we as an early childhood collaborative are doing as far as uh, making sure that we are talking about uh, workforce challenges and have some different strategies that we're taking out into the community. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that, um, kind of create a little bit of awareness. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, for me, for the Micah program, we're just working on different uh, plans. I was also about this as a coordinator. Um, we've been working on um, expanding um, our providers. We just uh, really hired two recruiters, hopefully get more members. We do offer services to my students in the summer, so we're working on that right now. Um, and then just expanding, and that's it. And then I think we had a few <laughs> comments um, via the Zoom, so I can go ahead and read those out for us. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so Jennifer Beck with the Kearney Area Children's Museum said, that they've added more in-house programs such as toddler time, morning stories, crafting together class, and other in-house programs. They are also continuing their museum on the move program where they take special activities into schools, agencies, or community events. Um, then she also gave a plug for her email. Um, so if you would like that, um, you can read up there, hit me up after this, and I can get that to you. Um, and then Penny Barker um, with Nebraska Tool Care um, shared that they have a new member experience video um, that they were able to approve a specialty product and coordinate with providers to quickly get Scarlett the thickener she needed for feeding her baby. And she plugged in a, a link in there. Um, 2023 rewards $15 having an annual adult checkup with a primary care doctor. $15 infant well, well care visit, $1 or one per visit, ages zero to 15 months, $15 annual child well visit with a primary care doctor, ages two to 21. Um, and then she has all the links, and we'll get all these links to Alex to put in the minutes to um, No One Needs Alone, which is a free program for schools that focuses on anti social isolation through easy to implement curriculum. Um, and then as a reminder, DHHS redetermination. Um, during the pandemic, the state has not been redetermining eligibility for Medicaid. This process will start back up March 1st. Many families have never gone through this process. It's important that families have their contact information up to date with DHHS um, and watch for the redetermination letters to arrive in mail and respond to them. 
marketplace options will be available to those that no longer qualify for Medicaid and don't have access to health insurance through their employer. Um, and also Penny, I think is on the board of the ARC. Um, if I'm wrong, Penny, but um, she shared that Buddy Bowling begins February 15th through April 12th, and they're looking for volunteers. Registration is due February 8th, and they also have Valentine's Dance February 10th. And I think that's, that's it for the team folks. Sounds good. Well, thanks for sharing, everybody. We'll hand it over to um, Alexandra to talk about um, priorities and shared performance mm -hmm. measures. Okay, we're, we're getting ready to break into groups, actually. So if you can find the laminated documents in front of you, I was going to refer you to the shared connections just to kind of get your head back in the game in terms of what we agreed was our primary area focus. So partnering with Families for Growth is where we're spending our energy, and that's our breakout sessions will include discussions and action plans around the next steps related to that. Mental health is not something we've let go of, but we did agree that it's um, our second priority. The other document I wanted to refer you to is the performance measures on the back. And to keep in mind as we start action planning, that we'll be looking for measurable outcomes in the work that we're doing. So this is a great reference in terms of what you need to be thinking about. Can we measure it? Can the difference will it make? What will people experience as a result of their um, activity or their engagement? So you can use those as documents and write that, and I think we're ready. All the groups. Um, how many groups are we having? I don't know, two, maybe every two tables. So I don't know if you that. How about each side? That would be like that would be like. Four, how about four to six in a group? How's that? I'll give you the flexibility to make those groups yourselves. Do you lead it all want to be in one group or do you want to be in other groups? Maybe I should ask the question. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll we'll subdivide and come join here. So we have one of the leaders mm -hmm. in each of the groups. So yeah, we could. And our head boards. You're going to start? One. Oh. Mm -hmm. I knew we were going to end up numbering. Mm -hmm. right. We can't just do one, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, and then four. So as we start to break out into these groups, um, on your agenda, there's questions we want you to consider. And um, I think you've heard the group talk a little bit about the parent engagement piece. You had some amazing ideas and your quick wins to bring more resources to parents in this community. But they were our ideas that did not include a lot of parent input. And so what we want to do is just take a step back from that and say, how do we start asking parents what resources they want access to and how they access those resources? But before we can even do that, we need to figure out how to get parents to a table to have a conversation. So that is the nutshell of this conversation. So we have this leadership team has framed um, three sections. There's more than three questions. Are you ready to bring parents alongside you to help inform this work? Do you have parents in mind that would gather? So those are two questions. I think they're on your agenda. I hope they're on your agenda. If not, I'm sure Matt will have them up here on the screen for you shortly. After that, questions to take, I'm gonna break out for, are we doing 15 minutes? That sounds perfect. Okay, so 15 minutes. And then what do we need to create in order to welcome parents and invite their participation? I think there's been some conversation like childcare might be a barrier, uh, transportation might be a barrier, time, time to meet might be a barrier. So think about those things and what are those barriers um, and how do we overcome some of those barriers? So just maybe think about that. And then where are parents personally connecting? So is there gathering places where parents are already coming together and having conversations um, that we could invite them in that forum or we could actually go to them in those forums? So, so 
those are the questions we'd like you to have a conversation around for the next 15 minutes. And how would be group one, group two, group three, group four up here? How's that? <clears throat> Oh. <laughs> they had. Are you ready to bring parents alongside you to inform this forum? I said answer yes, no, and the answer was. No. All right, what's more? We said um, currently maybe too agency oriented and represent more of what we do and not who we are. It might be overwhelming and intimidating. Um, also, don't feel like we're necessarily ready from the aspect of coordination, of time, um, specific topics, specific goals or objectives. There was a little bit of talk, I don't know if any of you were involved with the Hastings Collaborative, that they have a very specific goal of reducing poverty by a certain percent, by a certain date. What is our goal? Um, so what are the specific issues, objectives that we are addressing? Um, and then, I guess, again, just a detail of knowing who we're inviting and where we're inviting them. more information. I will share that we did discuss some ways, I think, to help with the questions that we have. So just to share, I think one of the things we talked about was, I think Nadia just mentioned that needs to be a little bit more specific, but we did talk about reasons being what do parents need in the community? When you, who do you turn to when you need something if you're struggling with a child issue? So that was one of the things we talked about. And then one of the other pieces we talked about being important is a feedback loop. So if we're going into this, we need to know exactly what we're doing with the information and the attendees that are attending need to know exactly what we're doing with the information and how we plan to inform the work. From that conversation. The, the next one is parents in life. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, so we said obviously the first questions are um, do we have child care? Do we provide a meal? Do we provide incentives? Um, being in person was important uh, for the mere fact of creating that connection to another person instead of being on Zoom. Uh, we talked about. Um, you know, the families who need, uh, maybe need the resources or need to hear the information the most are those that are um, emotionally exhausted and can't add one more thing to their, to their calendar. Um, connecting with families where they are um, as an option. We talked about bright future families or rooted families, um, connection to a uh, National Guard family resource. Um, using other groups um, to connect to families, so maybe faith communities or employers. Um, so really taking the information to where where people are instead of 
expecting them to come to you, come to us. Did I touch them up? Mm -hmm. All right, that is really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you not count all my missed words? Anything else? Try to capture up there. Group two. <clears throat> what do we need to create in order to welcome parents and invite their participation? I think our the place where we arrive is is really <clears throat> connected to your outcome, which is we we need to go to them. And so we really spent most of our time thinking about where are they meeting already and how can we access time in those meetings? Um, mops groups, child support groups. I mean, I have a whole no whole list there. But I think the overall outcome was let's spend more time and we, we can we can share all that on where they are. And then what the question is, we talk about home visitors and really tapping into the home visitor network, the migrant uh, family, the parent advisory committee, um, children's museum activity, story time, just that that the frame of reference of what's happening, what's our message and our purpose, and how do we get into those <clears throat> um, places of meeting to share it before we would invite or so we're going to people going to people going to them where they are so we're going to do a list of possible yeah going to places yeah awesome i think group three you're ready for this aren't you <laughs> uh, what are the barriers for getting people to come well nadia mentioned the barriers uh here with group one and i don't think we have any I don't think we have any disagreement with what those barriers are. Uh, we brainstormed, I would say three, three main topics came to mind. Uh, one was the virtual type survey of, again, trying to uh, get to people where they are and sometimes where this generation is, is online uh, with their phones. So that was one option. Another option relates to the Hastings model. Uh, and Denise brought this one up of let's incentivize them. $25 means a lot to most people, it means a lot to me, uh, and uh, incentivizing them through some sort of monetary gift card or something like that uh, may make them more apt to participate. And then finally, we talked about the large employers in town and going to those large employers and, and trying to set up some sort of a partnership where we could go into maybe the lunch break uh, at a factory per se. And yeah, <laughs> upset, <laughs> upset. But, you know, the idea of, of the employers and their time, uh, it was mentioned here. I mean, time is money to those people. Uh, we It would just be our task to assure them that the time we would use may be a little bit of money on the front end, but in the long term, maybe we can have more satisfied employees who aren't always thinking about what's wrong with their kid or where the next dollar is going to come because we have all these organizations here in the community to help them. So um, feed them, talk to them briefly, get some feedback from them, and hopefully make us better. I think the only other thing I would add is there was some conversation about this virtual survey being a piece that it, um, that brings people to the table or brings people to that next conversation if they're willing to have another conversation with us, what might that look like? And it maybe it'll be in person at that time. Can I share, Jill was here in our group and um, she had to leave, but one of the things that she mentioned was Region 3 is already providing their families with, um, oh gosh, where's that, a survey. For um, clients that are already in their pro whatever programs they might be. So she talked about is there a way that we can already utilize, utilize that data and that database to be like a preemptive to the dinner? So just that's already maybe a possibility. Good, good, good. And I think Head Start, we had quite a conversation the other day the way and Head Start gathers information too. And I think they're a very willing to partner in that, that process as well. And then adding to that, um, Jill said you're kind of sharing about um, getting the translation for those um, surveys and whatnot and just making sure that that helps. Very good. All right, group number four, repeat your question and please share. 
Where are parents personally connecting to other parents, caregivers, educators, and providers? We came up with a nice list, and some of you guys have already shared some of um, the things that we talked about. But um, the first thing we talked about was like youth sports or um, YMCA activities, those extracurriculars. Parents are visiting with other parents at those types of things. Um, churches. The church events that are sponsored, the Big Egg Blue, for example, all of those um, community events. Uh, people are connecting with other parents, with, like in their work setting, co-workers. Um, we talked about like Crossroads, Kearney Housing Agency, RAF, Food Pantries, Jubilee, so those social services. Um, parents are sometimes connecting, they're connected with providers for sure, but maybe connecting with one another. Um, Family events sponsored by the schools. And the school social workers would probably be our gatekeeper there. Child care settings, Head Start, KCLC, or other after school programs. We talked about convenience stores, um, cafes, bar and grill, maybe more so in our rural settings. Uh, and then some of the juvenile services like probation and diversion, those parents are usually a part of that. And so they're engaged in some manner. Uh, anything else? We talked a little bit about social media groups, but that's not necessarily a direct connection. But... And I always remember Angie's first comment when we started our very first meeting. She said, the parents are coming to see, pick up their children and drop off their children. So that's a great way to get information out to parents to use your child care providers. All right. What do you see some themes up here from these conversations? I'm taking a show on the road. Kathy, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important because this came up in our group too, and then we got back to our question. And you guys, I, I think maybe all the groups are, but we need to have, and maybe this is a leadership group, a smaller group needs to do this. But based upon our discussion, we need to have maybe two or three very specific questions that we want to address this time out. We're not going to cover everything all at once. And I think, um, I don't know, that's just, just a thought that the leadership group might want to consider. So specifically, two or three things they want to ask to get to whatever it is and can work with that. Yeah, and I should say the two um, questions I did share with the group, and I'm sorry, I told was we weren't real clear on that, is what resources are currently working for you in this community? How can we have other... I'm just going to be able to access resources. So we did have some very specific you. questions that we wanted to ask to start with, um, but I don't know that we clearly said that, and we probably need some more conversation on that. And I would expound upon that of short questions. Don't take a lot of their time, but also show them value. You know, the the meal, great. The money, great. But what can we what can we offer them as far as supports? that maybe could keep that connection and that communication going. It can create a bridge with the family. And that's what Hannah said too about the right. feedback loop. You know, they're making a commitment to to this group to share, to attend or to listen, whatever. <laughs> you know, what what is this group's commitment back as far as, you know, this is our plan and, and we'll provide whatever. In return, or these are resources that you can work for. Them. You know, what's that value for them? So, what do you need of your leadership team for the next meeting? I mean, talk to us a little bit. You want to go on the road. Do you want to be in person? You want to go to parents, right? <clears throat> the other thing I think, along with the um, specific questions is the specific goals or objectives. Right. Um, and maybe, you know, what this group has identified as the specific issues also. So if you're inviting somebody, you know, what what's the issue? And we talked about talking about systems, right? Because that's the, the overall impact is to prevent you from entering the system. And we wanted to test that with uh, 
families too, or parents, but I don't know if that's the first question you want to ask them. Mm -hmm. So kind of asking where the resources were, you didn't access the resources. Um, and then that systems question, I think, comes in time and shows that impact that you want to do. So that, that, that's a big question to throw at somebody the first time you're engaging with them. Like, what do you wish you had help for, but don't know where to go and how to get it? Those kinds of things. But... So if you're going to start on this, where where would your first step be? What's your first step? I'd like to suggest, we talked about it in our group, that we create some kind of shared document that everybody on this team could um, could add any place they know parents are meeting. Let's just get a let's get a point of a location where those places where you know parents are already gathered or those events that typically attract parents, because it's probably something that we'll go back to as well if we wanted if we want to continue with that concept of going to them, not creating more time, but creating more time within the space they are. Okay. And if everybody could just agree that they will, once that document's out, that they'll fill in what they know or, or look for it within, you know, a week or two. Then that gives us space, that gives us places to start seeing when they meet and start logistically figuring out how quickly we can start getting some information. Can I add another piece to that? That if you, if you share this, that you make a commitment that you're going to share with that group. Because I think we can easily come up with a list of 50 and then we're like, great job, we did a great job. And then we're back out saying who's going to do this and who's going to do that. But I think when you share where parents are, you're making a commitment to talk to those parents in that location. Or you're making a commitment to make sure that happens at that location. So there's some real intentionality behind that, right? That's okay, but then somebody's going to have to make sure that we have, like, so I give, say, I don't know, some PTO group that I'm going to go talk to. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want to just talk on what I know. We're going to have to have from the leadership team a very specific and same that. message. What I'm saying, a little bit yeah, yeah, it's and it's the same message, the same thing for every group, every time for whoever's going out. This is what you said, because otherwise, you you know, my interpretation might be completely. That's a great deliverable. So that, that was my second. Things. That was yeah. my second thing too. Is is more specific. So talk to me about specific. What is that? What's the goal? What's the goal? What's the what's the issue? What's the goal? What are the objectives? Is that our issue to find out what the parents want to know, what they need? Is that our issue? Or, no. or not? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we want to know what they don't know. Well, this is a little farther on, so it's probably not number three, but I think when you're talking about the event, it's going to be really important to have people from this team that also have lived experience to be able to kickstart a conversation and facilitate without being an agency there telling, speaking at the parents, but being able to be there and share your own lived experience so they um, feel welcome that they can. I think we also have to remember, let's not get caught up on the numbers of people that respond to surveys or the number of people that attend. Because if there's 10 different agencies and you get one from each, and just one of those helps a family or a child, we're a success. But we don't need to have 50 people show up to eat and get gift cards to be a success. Talk to me a little bit about what you need from this group to start these conversations. I, I think this can come together fairly quickly. We got to start them actually. I think knowing where parents are already meeting is huge. So we can to not, not have another thing. Yeah. Right, I keep hearing the word event. I don't want to, our group kind of talked about not having an event at all. I mean, you just go to where they actually are and get a piece on their agenda if they have an agenda, or have a booth at their activity or a table at their activity that they're already doing rather than to create another. I so, think as we wrap up for today, everyone, every one of you are going to work on this one, right? So we don't have to deliver these tasks. Everyone's going to work on 
thinking about who you'd be willing to take this message to. Yeah. Still a little foggy on the message, but you're willing to take that step, right? <laughs> and then with this group, the okay, and the leadership team took a stab at some kind of elevator speech yeah. and, and just emailed that, really emailed that personal reaction so that and made the commitment that you won't go into that meeting alone. Yes. Okay. Glad enough to get it to the next meeting. It's a bad question. Anything else from you? <laughs> Everything right. came out, isn't it? You are enough. <laughs> I'll just share with we talked about this. And as Matt's leaving, he just said, so who's doing that? Who's engaging that? What are we doing? And we're kind of like, I don't know if it's an invite. Okay, we're or all over the place. And then I think that it's all of us here. If you go to youth sports, it's I go to youth sports. It's my responsibility as a member of this group to start to start asking those questions. So okay. One quick question, your intended goal. Just throw a couple things out. What's your intended goal of these conversations? Ultimately, it goes back to the system issue. Helping, helping, helping young children and adolescents not enter the system. Right? Yes. So that was agency talk, right? It's our right. talk, yeah. We got to figure out how to. The whole system word, I know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Making connections. Making connections. Making connections. The people who care. Or the problem that I have with entering the system is some people need, need it. I agree. Some type of I agree. So I wouldn't say that we're outside, outside this room. Right? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I understand that. I'm just saying I, I don't have the answer either. But yeah. is it to support children and families well being? No. Challenges your family faces. No, I like it. No, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo can be easily clapped. Bingo. Yes. But I was thinking here. Yep. Support and connect. And like helping them build their village or support network if it's they don't have that. Like I said, the yes kids. Somebody's making decisions about your life. You might as well be talking to them. All right, leadership team. What else is on our agenda? Uh, anything else like, to move up? up? You feel like you're out of place in your next meeting, your next order. <laughs> next step. Right, next step. Take care of it. Okay. We're good. What do you call it? February? What is that? Third Wednesday or fourth Wednesday of February? Second. We will try to bring some of the data pieces for the steering committee if we can find some space on the agenda um we'll start bringing some of that to you too there's some really amazing data that's starting to come together for you to talk about as well so we we'll come back next week or next month what's the date or how about your 22nd we we'll come back next month if you took notes make sure that you get them to Alex. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.